Contrary to popular belief, learning to play the violin can be beautiful from the very beginning. All it takes is a few extra days following Paganini's advice to master each of the basic underlying skills before you begin playing. And it takes a reasonable instrument. Succeeding as a violinist is as much a mental game as anything. And there aren't many things worse than doing everything correctly, yet sounding terrible. So before you go too far, make it a point to find a decent violin player and ask them to play your violin and your bow for you. Have them compare them with their own and listen to the difference for yourself. Ask them if your violin is set up properly. And what they think of your bow. Ask them about the quality of your strings and the shape of your neck. Then no matter what comments they may have made along the way or at the beginning, appeal to their ego and ask them to make your violin sound as beautiful as they possibly can. Because whether your violin is worth $30 or $30 million, you should at least know what your violin is. The most common and worst mistake is when a parent who really can afford a nicer instrument purchases or rents the cheapest instrument possible to see if little Johnny or little Susie will enjoy playing it. The trouble is they usually don't like it because they can't make it sound very good and all too often they lose interest. This is why the advice of every master is that if you do have serious goals in mind, try to obtain the best violin that you can afford from the very beginning. Yet, if all you can afford really is a $30 violin, don't give up. Just realize what you have, put it in perspective, and then do the very best that you can. Yet, Every once in a while, ask someone who does have a nice instrument to let you play upon it, even if it's just for a few minutes every month or so, so that you can monitor what your music really sounds like. At the same time, I'll keep adding more and more videos that will help you make any violin, $30 or $30 million, sound and play much better than otherwise possible. There are tricks and secrets to this trade, and I plan on eventually sharing them all. The sheet music and the accompaniment are at the romanticschoolofmusic.com, and the links to both are in the description below this video. Both are copyright free, which means that you can print the music, copy it, and perform it with the accompaniment without worrying about lawyers or ever having your videos deleted by YouTube because of copyright issues. So, print the music and write down today's date to help you keep track of your progress. And in addition to Boeing's and other notations, some students even write down how much time they spend practicing a piece along with the dates and places where they perform it. It's up to you. Yet remember that the more serious you take your studies from the very beginning, the more serious your audiences will treat you later on. And while first song is as simple as the title suggests. It's meant to be the aspiring virtuoso's first performance piece in front of an audience. And 
They're encouraged to sell tickets, have a printed program, and perform it on stage, preferably with a spotlight. And to finish it off, refreshments and interviews afterwards. Or, if there is a pandemic going on, at least consider dressing up formally, acting the part, and making a YouTube video. Afterwards, invite everyone you know to watch your performance and have them give their critiques in their comments. If either of these two suggestions strikes you as ridiculous, remember that succeeding and earning a living as a solo violinist involves so much more than just being able to play the notes. And yet, we do need to be able to play the notes. And if you haven't yet, now would be a good time to get familiar with the free flashcards at the theromanticschoolofmusic.com. Because, once again, when it comes to greatness, attitude is the single most important factor. And the best way to gain the confidence you need is to make sure that you know every last note before you begin playing it. That way, you won't be stopping, struggling, or getting distracted while trying to draw a straight bow and produce a nice tone, like almost all beginners do. Almost all sheet music is laid out the same. At the top center is the title, which in this case is First Song, or for those from the technical school of music, First Piece. While many schools demand that you always call any music written for the violin a piece, at the Romantic School of Music, the goal is to make your violin literally sing. So the terms song and piece are used interchangeably. In the upper right corner is the name of the composer. And while it is believed that first song was used originally by Giuseppe Tartini, I have been unable to verify this with any dated documents, so I've put down unknown, and the earliest composer and date that I can verify, which is Alexander Bagantz in 1887. I have added my own name, which is common for an editor to do, because I have combined the best parts of the handwritten accompaniment that I have with his. At the upper left is the tempo. There are exceptions, yet most musical terms for music are in Italian. If you look up andantino, it's usually defined as slightly faster than andante. <laughs> Don't you love it? And if you look up andante, it is by definition moderately slow. So, Andantino is slightly faster than moderately slow, <laughs> and many composers define Andantino as moving along. The good news is that there are only about a dozen tempos to learn, and sometimes the editor will include a suggested tempo speed. So in this case, Andantino is 80 beats per minute. Yet, keep in mind, that most great composers consider the tempo more of a mood than an exact number. The five horizontal lines form the staff or stave, and you will find that many things in music have more than one name, and that the different terms are sometimes used interchangeably, sometimes in the same sentence, such as life. C'est la vie. <laughs> the lines and spaces between the lines represent the different notes or pitches. And this is where learning to read music truly begins. The space below the staff represents the open D string on the violin. And as we work our way up, the pitch of the notes get higher. E, F, G, open A, B, 
C, D, open E, F, G. Many pieces of music include different instruments, so I've added the Student Violin 1 designation at the beginning, as well as the abbreviation for First Violin, so you know what and where to look for later on. This elaborate looking G at the beginning of each staff, and <laughs> just so you know, you can call it a staff or a stave, but the plural of staff is staves. <laughs> ah, music. Okay, this elaborate looking G at the beginning of each staff is called the G clef or treble clef. And notice that the lower part of it circles the line that represents the note G. There are three other commonly used clefs, the bass clef, the alto clef, and the tenor clef. But right now, the only one you need to worry about is the treble clef or G clef, which is the highest clef and the one that best matches the violin. There are no sharps or flats in this area, which means that we will be playing in the key of C. And if we were putting our fingers on the strings, they would be placed following the patterns shown on the key of C flashcard. The time signature for first song is 4-4, four, four, which is by far the most common time signature and why it's sometimes called common time and sometimes designated by a large C instead of a 4-4. Four, four. Those composers have two words for everything, don't they? The top four means that there will be four beats per measure and each of these vertical lines designates the end of each measure. In other words, each measure will get four beats. The watch out. And remember that the very first measure in a piece sometimes doesn't have the full number of beats. And when this happens, it's called a pickup measure. The bottom number of the time signature tells us what type of note gets one beat. And in this case, the four means that each quarter note will get one beat. Think of the bottom number like the denominator of a fraction. There will be other lessons on keys and time signatures, but for now, the top four means that first song gets four beats per measure, and the bottom four means that a quarter note gets one beat. So each of these half notes, don't forget to study your flashcards, will get two beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All the way to the very last measure, where there's a single whole note. It's a whole note because the head is hollow and it doesn't have a stem. So this whole note gets held for all four beats of the measure. One, two, three, four. As a matter of taste, the very last note or the final phrase of a piece, sometimes called the outro, will usually be played slower or sustained to help emotionally finish the piece. The heavy bar line added at the very end of the last measure designates that you have reached the end of the piece. At the bottom of the music is the copyright holder and usually the copyright date, which will usually keep you from legally copying or performing the music in public without the copyright holder's written permission. But once again, this music is copyright free, so enjoy it with a free conscience. 
learning to read music may feel a lot like learning a foreign language. Yet, the wonderful part is that there are only a few Italian words and only seven different notes, because the notes keep starting over again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Though, when you begin playing scales, you need to begin on the note designated by the key. In other words, in the key of C, like this, you would start on the note C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Or in some countries, it's Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. And one of the funnest lessons coming up is when we start playing with these seven different notes in a very unique way. But what makes first song so nice is that you only have to remember three notes, D, A, and E, which are the top three open strings of the violin. The profound greatness of Paganini's teaching method comes from his philosophy of analyzing what needs done and then approaching everything step by step. Let's put everything in perspective. Most students begin their studies on the violin with a half-hour lesson going through a simple piece like first song. Then they spend a half-hour a day or more practicing the piece during the next week. Then another half-hour lesson to review it and having the teacher critique their posture and straighten out their bow. Then, if they're really talented, one more week to memorize the piece and work out the bugs, for a grand total of at least seven hours, if everything goes well. Yet, by using Paganini's method, let's accomplish all of this in less than 15 minutes. And if you've been through other schools of music and just yelled, no way, I don't blame you. Yet, it's true. This can all be done in less than 15 minutes, including the time that it takes me to ramble on about it. But you must have patience. I know that this sounds like a contradiction, but you must have absolute patience for just 40 seconds at a time. But, believe it or not, almost no one develops this patience outside of the school of Paganini and the Romantic School of Music, so they end up wasting years of their life. The 15 minutes starts right now. From the very beginning to the very end, first song takes 40 seconds to play. Even when we sustain the last note, an extra beat. Step one is to forget everything, including the notes, and simply count with the metronome for 40 seconds. Slowly, methodically, and evenly. Never rushing anything. But we will be doing it at 80 beats per minute. Step two is to count the notes. I know that this all seems too simple to be true, 
But when it comes to mastering the violin in a short amount of time, this is magic. Once again, absolute patience. Let your mind relax and don't look forward to reaching the end for just 40 seconds. Step three requires that we now learn the notes. There are three, the open D string, the open A string, and the open E string. This seems simple enough right now. Yet, when you add everything else that it takes to play the violin, even three simple notes can become overwhelming, at least in the beginning. So the goal is to name each note with absolutely no hesitation as you get to each one. Let's begin. Congratulations! You can now read simple sheet music. The next part of this lesson is traditionally reserved for the aspiring virtuosi. Yet, why not start off like a virtuoso? Why not you? It's been said that Paganini could play an entire concerto by just glancing at the music beforehand. At the same time, modern scientists claim that no one has ever had a photographic memory. So did you ever wonder how Paganini did it? First song is the first step in learning how. And for the future virtuoso or the professional violinist starting over, this is where you begin opening your mind to the possibilities of greatness. Another Italian word is pizzicato, which means plucking the strings with your fingers. And it's usually done in normal playing position with the thumb placed against the corner of the fingerboard and then plucking the string with the meaty part of your index finger, close to the center of where the string will vibrate. We'll go E, A, D, G, G, D, A, E. Let's begin. And these plucked notes should sound reasonable, <laughs> as long as you pull your finger clear of the vibrating string. There are 25 notes in first song and three unique pitches, D, A, and E. So let's go ahead and play the first line, pizzicato, while reading the music but not worrying about the tempo yet. D, D, A, A, D, D, A, A. 
Simple enough. Now close your eyes and play the first line pizzicato from memory. And one third of first song is memorized. Think of the second line as continuing from where the first line left off. The first line ends with two open A's, and the second line begins with two open A's. A, A, E, E, A, A, E, E. And now, try the second line from memory with your eyes closed. The challenge now is to close your eyes and play the first two lines completely from memory. But before you do, take a moment to remember that first song begins with two open Ds, and the second line begins by repeating the last two open As of the first line. The third line starts with two open A's again, just like the second line, and it has two different notes or pitches again. A, A, D, A, D, A, D, D, D. And don't cheat the last note. Let's try it again. Yes, this is the most difficult line of first song to memorize and to play. And realizing this right now is important because it's the most difficult part of any piece that challenges the violin player's confidence and determines who they really are as a violinist. So now let's follow Paganini's advice and Practice the most difficult part until we not only memorize it, but also own it. note ring free. See if you can do it from memory. Do whatever it takes to really own it. Vary the tempo. Give it extra feeling or even some attitude like this. And with this, you should be able to play the entire piece from memory. Let's continue doing it at a faster tempo. And as always, remember that first song begins with two open Ds, and that the second line continues on where the first line leaves off with two open As, and never cheat the last note.
For those who really are memory challenged, don't give up, <laughs> at least not yet, because there are many games to be played that can help, like tapping each of your fingers on a desk or on your arm, with each of your fingers representing the corresponding number of the string you're going to play. In other words, one, two, three, four represents E, A, D, G. And first song begins on open D, so use your third finger. And usually doing this exercise a little faster is better. D D A A D D A A A A E E A A E E A A D A D A D D D. Or you can wave your hand in the air in a different position for each note. D D A A D D A A A A E E A A E E. A, A, D, A, D, A, D, D, D. Everyone's mind works differently, and trying different things can usually help. With that said, it's now time to play first song, Pizzicato, from memory with the metronome, while remembering that it begins with two open Ds, and that each of the half notes gets two beats and don't cheat the whole note at the end. We begin playing after the fourth beat of the metronome. Our 15 minutes are just about up, and it's time to see if Paganini's method and the Romantic School of Music works for you. If it's been a while since you watched the other lessons about holding the violin and drawing a straight bow, double check your posture, and remember that your right arm will want to pull your bow crooked as you approach the tip, but you won't let it and that your violin will want to pull back, but you won't let it. <laughs> you should always warm up before practicing or performing any piece, and there will be other lessons for more advanced warm-ups later on. Yet, for now, a nice warm-up for first song might be to play E, E, A, A, D, D, G, 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 D, D, A, A, E, E, while using as much of the bow as you're comfortable with. If your warm-up didn't sound as good as it should, you can play it as many times as you like. Also consider tilting your bow a little bit more, moving it further away from the bridge, and pressing down just a little bit more with your index finger. Everyone is different, yet this is the most common advice that helps. When you feel good about your warm-up, wait until after the fourth beat of the metronome to begin playing first song. And remember that each of the half notes gets two full beats.
This next week, you should practice playing first song, both from memory and while reading the music, while each day trying to draw a slightly longer and straighter bow. Also, make sure to make videos of yourself to double check how straight your bow really is. And remember that above all else, you need to have all the patience in the world, at least for 40 seconds. <laughs>